The Portsmouth Gaseous Diffusion Plant was built between 1952 and 1956 as the last of three gaseous diffusion plants constructed to enrich uranium in support of the nation's defense program. The other two facilities are located in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, where enriched uranium for the bomb used at Hiroshima was produced, and Paducah, Kentucky, which stopped production in 2013 and is currently also undergoing decommissioning and remediation. During the early years of the plant, highly enriched uranium was produced at Portsmouth for use in nuclear weapons and nuclear submarine programs. The production of highly enriched uranium was suspended in 1991. The plant enriched uranium for use in commercial nuclear power plants until production was terminated in May 2001. The plant was maintained in cold standby status until the end of 2005 when it transitioned to cold shutdown in preparation for decommissioning of the facilities. Today, DOE's mission is to safely decontaminate and decommission the Portsmouth site while partnering with the community to create a sustainable economic future for the region. The site was very self-sufficient while in full operation with many of the same capabilities of a small city, including streets, railroads, police and fire departments, taxi service, water and sewage treatment, electrical switchyards, and a medical facility. Many of the utilities and services are still in use but are being optimized for current site missions. The DOE reservation is nearly 3,500 acres, of which 1,200 acres are inside the seven-mile stretch of Perimeter Road. A substantial network of additional roads connect all portions of the plant site, while 12 miles of rail connects to Norfolk Southern Heartland Corridor Mainline. The Portsmouth Gaseous Diffusion Plant is the largest employer in Pike County. Its nearly 2,400 employees are crucial to the economic livelihood of the Southern Ohio region. As we begin our tour, you will note the building designations begin with an X, a moniker from the original Manhattan Project. Each of our facilities are labeled with an X to denote the Portsmouth site. The buildings we are passing now are mainly administrative areas. The XT801 on your right contains the badging office and is where the majority of the site's training takes place. The X-1000 coming up on your right is an administration building and the X-3000 on your left houses the Department of Energy employees. Although DOE manages the cleanup program out of the Portsmouth Paducah Project Office in Lexington, day-to-day -day operations are managed by the Portsmouth site lead with a team of DOE project managers and support staff. As we make our way to the entrance to the demolition area of the site, you will see our fire department and emergency services buildings on the right. Our fire and EMT services provide aid on site as well as to local fire and EMT services throughout Pike County. Our emergency services department, located next to the fire department, regularly conducts drills with site employees to maintain a high level of readiness in the event an emergency arises. Here you can see the site of a plume excavation. Compaction fill is needed for debris disposal at the on-site waste disposal facility. Existing groundwater plumes and landfills inside Perimeter Road are being excavated and consolidated into the on-site waste disposal facility called the OSWDF. This approach remediates the groundwater plumes that contain mostly trichloroethylene, commonly known as TCE, which was used to clean machinery when the plant was operational. The excavation method will remediate the area faster than the traditional pump and treat methods and leaves behind more acreage for the site redevelopment. On the right, where you see the massive concrete slab, is where the X-326 process building once stood. It was the first of three process buildings to be demolished. The X-326 process building worked in conjunction with the other two process buildings, X-333 and X-330, and was considered the high end of the cascade where the enrichment process was completed. It originally measured a half a mile long, or the equivalent length of seven football fields. The two-floor facility had more than 2.6 million square feet of floor space. Before demolition could begin, 7,000 process components were removed and shipped off-site for disposal. One million non-destructive assay measurements were analyzed to ensure piping and components could be safely placed into the OSWDF. The structure came down in July of 2022 and a total of 165,000 cubic yards of debris were placed into the OSWDF. On your right, you will see one of many air monitoring systems across the site. These are located around the property and are paired with co-located air monitors that are operated by the Ohio Environmental Protection Agency and Ohio Department of Health. The data from these air monitors can be viewed on our website so the public can view the readings at any time. These air monitors are so sensitive they have picked up wildfires in Canada. Notice the domed roofed concrete building to your left. This is the X300 plant control facility, the hub of the gaseous diffusion plant. 
It was one of the original buildings constructed in the early 1950s and has operated non-stop 24 hours a day. From inside that building, they could monitor all three process buildings and communicate with the off-site electrical power plants supporting the site. This building is still operational and looks like a 1950s Star Wars control center inside. If there's any type of incident on the plant site, the first call goes to the X300 building. From here, the shift superintendents notify emergency responders if needed. The building was constructed to be both earthquake-proof and bomb-proof when it was built. On the left side, you will see the facilities used by our security officers. Proforce provides 24-hour security to the site and continually trains to maintain certifications. They have their own training area and shooting range. The current building being prepared for demolition is the X333 process building. The X333 is the first of three process buildings where the gaseous diffusion operations began. It housed the largest pieces of equipment and required the most electrical power consumption. The X333 building is about 1,456 feet long, 970 feet wide, and 82 feet high. The two floors have a combined floor space of approximately 65 acres. The building is a little more than a quarter mile long. NDA has successfully marked, measured, and characterized over 45,000 items of processed gas equipment, components, and piping in support of the X333 process building characterization and the material sizing area successfully segmented 626 triple aught converters, which resulted in over 41 million pounds of generated metal. The X330 process building was the first of the three process buildings to be operational and released to the Atomic Energy Commission. Construction of the X330 began in 1952. The final unit was completed and turned over on July 14, 1955. The equipment in the X330 was similar to that of the X333 except for necessary size and capacity changes to service the installed process equipment. In addition to uranium enrichment, the X330 offered other auxiliary services such as the tails withdraw facility, cold recovery system, interim purge facility, nitrogen plant, air compressors supporting the plant air system, maintenance shops and administrative offices. Here you can see the site of the former X-533 electrical switchyard. Demolition of the 20-acre site of the former switchyard was completed in December 2010. More than 160 electrical towers were removed, as well as two switch houses and a control house. Some of the towers were 120 feet tall. The metals were recycled by the Southern Ohio Diversification Initiative, or SODI, with half of the proceeds being retained within the community for economic development efforts and the other half returned to the U.S. Treasury. More than $2.2 million has been provided to SODI from the metals recycling. The second switchyard, X530, has been downsized to 50 megawatts for cleanup operations. As part of DOE's cleanup plan, highly contaminated waste is shipped off-site for disposal, while lower-level contaminated demolition debris, waste, and soils is consolidated on-site at the OSWDF. The OSWDF is a specially engineered disposal site with a multi-layer liner and cap system designed to consolidate demolition debris and rubble into one centralized confined space that protects public health and the environment. The overall OSWDF design can accommodate more than 5 million cubic yards of waste and engineered fill from building demolition, soil remediation, and consolidation of the existing on-site landfills and groundwater plumes. The design is proven safe from similar successful on-site disposal facilities at other DOE sites in the United States. The final impacted material disposal area footprint will occupy about 100 acres. The OSWDF is designed to perform for at least 1,000 years and to blend in with the regional landscape. The Duff 6 conversion project provides for the operation of facilities in Portsmouth, Ohio and Paducah, Kentucky. The Duff 6 inventory is converted into depleted uranium oxide, a more stable chemical form that can be reused, stored, or disposed. A co-product of the conversion process is hydrofluoric acid, which is reused industrially. There are approximately 740,000 metric tons of Duff 6 at the two sites. The Portsmouth Duff 6 inventory is expected to be processed in approximately 18 years and Paducah's larger inventory within 30. DOE leases this area to private industry to develop centrifuge uranium enrichment technology. Centrifuge technology is an attractive alternative to gaseous diffusion because it uses much less energy. Starting in 2019, work has been geared to construct a cascade of centrifuges designed to produce high assay, low enriched uranium, or HALU, 
which is going to be needed for the next generation of advanced reactors. Part of the decommissioning and decontamination process is transferring property for reuse and reindustrialization. SODI is the DOE's recognized community reuse organization at Portsmouth. SODI works with private and publicly owned companies that have an interest in redeveloping portions of the site. Here you can see the first parcel, approximately 80 acres, that has been identified for potential reuse by a private industry. This was the first piece of property to be turned back over to the community. Parcel 2, which is 227 acres, has also been turned over to SODI, and Parcel 3, which is 48 acres, is currently being prepared to be turned over. Several industries have already shared an interest in building on the site, and SODI recently sold the initial 80 acres to Trillium H2 Power LLC for a 250-acre H2 Trillium Energy and Manufacturing Complex.